Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this video lecture on computer system architecture. In this video lecture, we are going to cover stack organization. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bhatt. Let us start. First, let us have a look at the topics that we are going to touch in this video lecture. We will start with the concept of stacks. What is a stack? And then we will know how stacks are used in computers. Then we will cover the stack organization and finally stack implementation. So let us start with the first topic. What is a stack? So a stack is a data structure. It means it is a kind of data structure that is used to store information. But that information is stored in such a way that last item stored is the first item that is retrieved that is whenever we store information inside this stack the item that goes last is the one that will come first out of that stack so this principle is called last in first out principle or simply lifo principle so stack works on the principle of lifo the last item that goes in is the one that comes first out. Let us understand this stack with the help of an example. So if we have a bucket and we want to put these palettes inside this bucket. So we want to put palette number one, then palette number two, three and so on. And we want to put all these items inside this bucket. So if we look in terms of the stack in stack putting an element inside the stack or storing an element inside the stack is called a push operation so push operation in stack means when we want to save or put some element inside the stack so now let us put these elements one by one inside the stack so first the plate number one will go into the bucket then plate number two, three. So what we are doing, we are pushing items into the bucket. So we are pushing plate one, plate two, plate three, plate four, plate five, plate six, and finally plate number seven. Now, if we have another plate that is plate number eight, and we want to push it into the bucket, there is no space left. So we cannot put this item into the bucket because the space of the bucket is already occupied by the uh, by different plates and we are unable to put or push this item into the bucket. So in terms of stack, when there is no space left to put further items into the stack, we call that the stack is full. So we say that this stack is full or we call it as stack overflow. So we have overflowed the stack because the space of the stack is not enough to hold that uh, uh, further items or hold the item that we want to push into the stack. Now, if now we want to remove these plates from this bucket, so we have to remove them in the reverse order. The structure of this bucket is so that we are not able to retrieve this plate number one until we remove all the plates up to plate number one. So that is the stack structure. So we want to remove these items and removal of an item from a stack is called pop operation. So we are performing a pop operation. So we want to remove the item. So when we talk in terms of stack, removing an item from a stack is called pop operation. So we are popping up item number seven. This item number seven was the last item that was stored inside this bucket. But when we have popped that or removed that element, it is the first that has came out. So that is the name LIFO, last in first out. Last item comes first. So this is called LIFO structure or LIFO principle. So next item is six. 
then we will get plate number 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, then last item. Now, if we want to remove further items from the this stack, so this is the last element the last element that was popped out of this stack was plate number one but if we further want to get items out of this bucket there is no item left inside the bucket so when in terms of stack if we want to get or uh, we want to pop an item out of the stack but the stack has no element left we can call that stack empty or underflow underflow means there is no item left inside the stack and we further want to remove the items the operation or the error that will be highlighted at the item is the underflow error so we have underflow there is no item left inside the bucket moving further now the question arises how do we keep track whether stack is full or empty how do we know that whether a stack is full or empty so in terms of bucket we can experience it physically if the bucket is empty so we know that it is empty and if there is no room left in the bucket we know that it is full but in terms of data structure how do we know that whether a bucket is full or but bucket is empty so we know that with the help of a pointer in computer system when we implement a stack we implement a special kind of pointer that keeps track of whether the stack is empty or whether the stack is full or whether the stack has room left for further items so for example if mo in most of the systems if the stack pointer is initialized to zero that means it is empty or in some systems we initialize it to minus one indicating that there is no item in the uh, stack or the stack is empty and if stack pointer is equivalent to n n is the capacity of the stack for example if we know that this bucket is capable of holding seven plates then this n will be equivalent to seven and if the stack pointer points to seven this means it is full it is holding plates to the capacity to the maximum of its capacity and there is no space left so we know that the bucket is full and in terms of stack if we have assigned 10 locations to a stack and stack pointer is pointing to the last location and that is holding data then we say that stack is full now how do we implement stack in computers so how are these? This is the real life example and we see this stack in a number of real life examples. When we put plates uh, in uh, one after another, that is a stack. When we put books one uh, after another in and arrange them as a pile, that is a stack. And we have a number of examples of stacks in real life. Though, how do we implement this stack inside the computer system? so in computer system we have two ways to implement the stack one is to implement it with the help of registers which is rarely used because of the limited number of registers available in the system and the another way is to implement it as a portion of memory inside the ram so inside the ram a portion of memory is used as a stack with a processor register as stack pointer so we have a processor register that indicates whether the stack is empty whether the stack is full or whether the stack is having capacity to hold more items that is implemented with the help of a register that is called a sp or stack pointer and the stack is implemented inside this ram and we assign some locations for this stack from some location for example 3998 
to 3000. So we have assigned some locations. <coughs> sorry and when we store data inside the stack we implement it in such a way that we get the principle of LIFO last in first out so whenever we put an item inside a stack the last item that goes into the stack is the one that comes first so we implement in it in such a way so it is a useful structure for processor implementation in a number of algorithms or operations, processor requires a stack structure. For example, uh, we will see some examples below uh, uh, in a minute. And it is also useful for programmers. As a programmer, when you will design or when you will try to find solution for a number of problems, you will require a stack structure. And you have to implement it in the form of a stack. Another structure equivalent to the stack is called queue. You will require a queue or any other data structure that you will be covering in your data structure course. So it is a useful structure both for processor as well as for the programmers who are writing programs. So here are some of the applications inside the processor when the operating system implements the function calls and returns you know that when you write a program in c or c plus plus you divide the program into some functions or procedures and you call those, those procedures but when we call a procedure and how do we store the current state of that function where from we are calling in that program those items are put inside a stack for example if we have moved from program a to some function b and from that function to some c and that function to some d how do we keep track of the current state of this b function c function because it will be holding some variables those variables are stored inside the stack and when we return from one function the last call that has gone into that stack will be popped up and those items will be retrieved so in that way stack is very important next when we evaluate, uh, evaluate expressions you know that you are uh, putting a lot of mathematical expressions inside your programming or inside your computer different time how are these functions evaluated you will know that inside your data structure or in discrete mathematics these expressions are evaluated we have three kinds of expressions one is called infix where the operator is in the middle of the operands another is called prefix in which the opera operator is written before the operand and another is called postfix in which the operator addition subtraction multiplication whatever is written at the end of the operands so we can use this stack to convert an infix expression to prefix or postfix and for postfix to prefix so in order to convert these different kinds of expressions from one format to another we require this stack how do we do that that is a different concept or problem that we can cover in data structures then we have another application of these stacks that is called a backtracking procedure backtracking is a kind of problem where we have to go or search for some solution and we have a number of ways and we go to one uh, uh, solution and from that solution to another solution and from that solution to some another solution when we find that we have reached some x solution and that x solution is wrong what we do we backtrack to the previous solution where from we have chosen this uh, path so that is called backtracking it has a great implementation it has a great application inside the computer science so in that we require stack to keep track of the last decision that was taken so that we can backtrack to that decision and take an alternative decision so these are some of the applications of this stack now next how do we implement stack stack implementation so stack implementation depends on its use how we use this stack that will decide its implementation but 
we desire that the stack implementation inside a processor should be implemented in such a way that it should be available to the programmers because programmers are using this stack a lot and they require it to solve a number of problems so if we are implementing this stack at the processor level or at the pro uh, operating system level that stack or those stack operations push pop those should be available to the programmers for example so we can uh, include this stack operations push pop in the instruction set if we are implemented uh, it as isa instruction set architecture at the isa level then these stack operations push pop should be available as an instruction set instructions as we use add subtract multiply div or any move operation this push and pop should be available there for the programmers to use in their code so here are some of the operations of the stack so we have push which we now know that push means to add a new element to put a new element on the stack on top of the stack remember that whenever we push element we put it at the top of the stack top of the stack is identified by stack pointer then pop pop means to delete the top element from the stack so delete the item remove the item that is at the top of the stack then we have unary operation that means to replace the top element with some another result so if we have a, at the top of the stack we have 5 and we want to replace it with 7 that will be a unary operation we will use that unary operation to replace the topmost item we can implement a binary operation or using this stack for example if you might have read different kinds of instruction formats we have zero address instruction formats so what are zero address instruction formats in zero address instruction formats the operands are implied that those operands will be um, uh, available on the stack so binary operation we have we have to perform operation on top two elements of the stack we pop the top first element then the second element and then perform the operation on those and store the result at the top of the stack so these are the basic fundamental operations that we can implement in the instruction set so that we are able to or the programmers are able to use these uh, stacks now uh, for the stack implementation what are the other things that are required we require three important addresses in some systems we require three and in others only one is used and other uh, are implied so we require a stack pointer so what is a stack pointer as you can see here in the diagram this is the memory and inside this memory we have designated some locations for the stack as you can see the here we have designated some locations for the stack and in order to identify the location where we want to put our data item we want to push our data item we use a stack pointer which is a register that points to the top of the stack so stack is holding a b c top of the stack is holding c and this stack pointer is holding the address of this c that is three so it contains the address of the top of the stack so if an item is appended or deleted from the stack the pointer is incremented or decremented accordingly so if we want to remove this c item this stack pointer should now point to this b item so we have to decrement it and if we want to add some another item we want to push some other item say d then this stack pointer should be incremented then it will point to four and then we can store it here in the d so this is the basic uh, address or the basic uh, structure that is required while implementing this stack then we require a stack base so what is a stack base stack base represents the base of the stack the starting location of the stack so where from we start the stack so we should be able to know when the stack is empty so it contains the bottom location jitni uh, the location is that we have assigned to the stack for example if we have assigned the location is from 1 to f uh, 10 or 63 to this stack then it represents this bottom location where from we have started this stack 
So how do we use this stack base? This stack base will be helpful when we implement it. We can check whether the stack is empty or not or whether there is underflow. Then the third structure that is called stack limit. Stack limit is a pointer that we can use to represent the last location that has been assigned to the stack. So it represents the limit. For example, if the starting location is one and we have assigned 63 locations to this stack, then this stack limit will be holding the topmost. And if you will see in this second example, we have this stack implemented from this location to this location. Stack base is pointing to the starting location. Stack limit is pointing to the last two location and stack pointer is pointing to the locations in between. So if the stack pointer is equivalent to stack base, this means stack is empty. If stack pointer is equivalent to stack limit, then it means stack is full. And if stack pointer is less than stack limit, then there is more room for the new items. So these are the three addresses that we require while implementing it. Then there are two key attributes related to the stack implementation. When we implement stacks, we have to consider two important parameters or attributes. One is whether that stack is ascending stack or descending stack. So what does that mean? Ascending stack means we are starting from a smaller location address to some higher location. So for example, this stack has been assigned locations from 3999 to 3000 or some other location. So how do we grow this stack? So it has been assigned, for example, 100 locations from location number 1 to 100. We can start both from the first location. We can start filling up this stack from location number 1, then 2, then 3. So it is ascending order of the addresses that have been assigned to the stack. So stack has started its operation from the lowest address and when we are filling up, we are pushing items into the stack, we are incrementing this stack pointer to next higher address and then to next higher address that is called ascending stack. But in most of the systems, the stack is implemented as a descending stack. What is a descending stack? In descending stack, the location, starting location of the stack, stack starts from the higher address. So if we have assigned location number 1 to 100 to a stack, we will initialize the stack base to location number 100. So it is pointing to the highest address. Now if we want to push an item into the stack, we will decrement this 100 by 1 then it will point to the 99 location that is the second item then to the 98th location that is the third item and so on and when is the stack full when the stack pointer is pointing to the first location the least address so that is descending and in most of the processors especially in x86 the stack is implemented as a descending stack so you must be aware what is an ascending stack and what is a descending stack. In ascending stack, the locations that have been assigned to a stack, we start from the smallest location and then increment that to the highest location. But in case of descending, we start from the highest location and then decrement it consecutively to the lowest location. Then another thing that we must know about this stack implementation is whether stack has been implemented as empty or whether stack has been impl implemented as full. So what is stack as empty and what is stack as full? When we say that stack as em empty, stack item can point to the current item that is on top of the stack. So for example, if we have an empty stack, this is an empty stack. This empty and full does not mean that whether the stack is empty or the stack is full. It means when we start a stack, this is the initial state of the stack. Uh, stack. T stack. Now, we have location number 1 to some uh, x location. We have inserted the item number j that is at the top of the stack. 
so this stack pointer is pointing to the item that is at the top of the stack so it is pointing to the current data item that is on top of the stack so we have implemented it as a full because every time this stack pointer will be pointing to the location where we have data stored but if we want to implement it as an empty store so in case of empty store it the stack pointer always points to an empty location where we have to put the current item so in case of full this is the j is the location where we are currently ho holding the top of the stack if we want to insert i into this stack so this i will be inserted at a location that is higher than the stack pointer we have to increment it depending upon it is an ascending or descending if it is ascending then we have to increment it to next to location and it will point to this location and then we can store i so that is called uh, uh, full and in case of empty what happens the stack pointer always points to an empty location and we are putting the data item at that location so this is the stack pointer can either point to the top of the item in the stack which is full uh, method or the next free space on the stack in case of empty it always points to the free space if, if we have implemented this as an empty stack then the stack pointer top of the stack is j its sp will be pointing to next free location which is this location and there will be no item on that so these are the two uh, important uh, attributes related to the stack implementation now let us see how to implement these stack operations so we have two main operations associated with the stacks that is push operation and the pop push is to put or store an element on top of the stack and pop is to remove the topmost element from the stack so in order to implement these stacks we need some structures or registers as you are aware that inside the processor we have some important registers one register that is associated with stack is called stack pointer that is sp then we have pc pc is a register that points to the current instruction that is being executed or that is next to be executed on the cpu then we have address register and data register address register always holds the address of the location that we want to read or write on the memory and when that data is read or written on the memory the data must be stored inside the data register if we want to store that data we will put the address inside address register and data inside data register and that data item in the data register will be stored at the location pointed by ar and if we want to read the data item from the memory then we will put its address inside the address register and the uh, memory circuitry will read that data item from the uh, memory and put it into the data register from that we can further process that so now let us see how to implement push operation before push operation we have to check for whether the stack is full if we want to store an item on top of the stack we must first see whether there is any empty location or not if stack is full then we cannot store that so before executing these instructions that we have shown here we have to first check for whether the stack is full or not so for that we can make use of this variable full and if the full is zero then this means it is not full and if full is one that means full the stack is full so before executing these instructions we have to check for stack full then once we are satisfied that the uh, there is a room for further data in the stack then we can execute these instructions to push an item on the stack so what do we do first of all for example let us see the previous example here we have stack pointer pointing to the top of the stack and we want to store for example i this item we want to store on top of the stack so first we need to increment this stack pointer to the next location if we it is implemented as an ascending stack or decrement it if it is uh, implemented as a de uh, descending stack so sp must point to the next location so we do 
एस पी इक्वल टू एस पी प्लस वन स्टैक पॉइंटर इज इंक्रीमेंटेड सो इट पॉइंट टू द नेक्स्ट लोकेशन इन द स्टैक नाउ वट टू डू नेक्स्ट वी हैव टू स्टोर द डेटा फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस आई वी वॉन्ट टू स्टोर एट दिस लोकेशन नाउ वी हैव टू स्टोर दैट आई इन साइड द डेटा रजिस्टर बिकॉज एज आई टोल्ड दैट एनी थिंग दैट वी वॉन्ट टू स्टोर ऑन द रैम और वी वॉन्ट टू रीड फ्राम द रैम इट मस्ट बी अवेलेबल इन द डेटा रजिस्टर इफ वी आर रीडिंग इट विल बी पुट इन द डेटा रजिस्टर इफ वी आर राइटिंग ऑन द स्टैक रैम इट द डेटा आइटम मस्ट बी अवेलेबल ऑन द डेटा रजिस्टर सो वी आर Uh, giving the instruction that store the data stored inside the data register in the location pointed by stack pointer in the memory location m means memory location pointed by stack pointer so it will write on top of the stack then next what to do next we have to check whether by putting this item if it was the last location in the stack then after putting this item the stack will be full so we have to check if the stack pointer now points to n n is the limit of the stack so if it points to n then what we have to indicate that full equal to 1 now next onwards when we in uh, when we put this uh, operation and when we execute this push operation then we will first check whether full is uh, zero or not and if it is zero then there is room if it is one then it is full so we are checking full equal to one when full is one that means empty is zero because these are against one another contradictory so full is one then empty is zero there is no location so this is the push operation now how do we perform the pop operation pop is similar so first we have to check whether the stack is empty or not for pop operation we have to check before executing these instructions we have to check for uh, stack under flow how do we check that we check if empty equal to 0 if empty is 0 that means there is some room empty if empty equal to 1 that means the stack is empty so before executing these instructions we have to go for this check then once we are satisfied we pass that uh, uh, we pass that instruction we pass that condition that there is room in the stack then what do we do first we put the data item pointed by the top of the stack for example if we want to remove this i from our stack we put this i into the data register because i told you anything we read from the memory must be put inside this data register all right that is again put in the data register so we read the item pointed by the stack pointer into the data register so we have read this item sp points to i i will be put in the data register it will go to data register the next next we have to decrement this stack pointer because it must point to the top of the stack and now top of the stack is j i we have removed we have popped so we have to decrement it we issue the instruction sp equal to sp minus 1 we are decrementing it now after performing this operation now we check for the underflow if this was the last item that we have removed from the stack that means now stack will be empty and we have to check for that if stack pointer equal to 0 if stack pointer now points to the base location zeroth location then empty is one then empty means the stack is empty and we have to indicate it by this variable empty equal to one and since empty is one then full equal to zero now full cannot be one so full means zero then this is the pop operation this is how we simply implement push and pop operation is inside the coding you can use this uh accordingly in your programming if you are using implementing a stack in the um, c programming you can make use of a, a, an array and then accordingly implement the array in such a way that whenever you store an item inside that array you are putting it at the top of the array at the maximum location of the array and whenever you are removing you are decrementing that so this way you can implement it inside the c programming so hope yeah uh, after going through these different topics now you are aware of what is a stack how to implement a stack what are the different operations of the stack how to implement those operations of the stack so thanks for watching the lecture allah hafiz